And this is a day that we want to celebrate uh, my son's uh, miracle. Daniel has received a miracle, uh, uh, and I'll let you let him tell you more about that a little later. But Annette will open in prayer today, and this is a special prayer for all of you that are watching by way of live stream today. Um, I understand there's about 17 people right now, and this uh, will probably uh, be seen by several hundred people before it's over with. But uh, Annette, this is a very happy day for us, isn't it? It's a happy day, not just for our family, but for countless of people that have believed the Lord through the trying months that we have had, um, just believing and trying to do everything that we felt God was leading us to do or Daniel felt we were just in a, agreeing with him. So it's not just something that is just our family. We want to say thank you for everyone that has stood in agreement with us that God still heals today. And I want to just open in prayer now. Um, and we're just going to invite the presence of the Lord because there is no boundaries with God. And He is with us even in the times that we are faithless. Father, we just thank You for this day. Thank this you, is God. Your day and we celebrate the snow. Lord, it has forced a lot of us not to be on the roads and it has kept us home. And, and as women, Lord, we've had to, we've, we found ourselves cleaning more. We found ourselves cooking more. But we just thank you for the seasons that you bring. So we rejoice in the snow and we rejoice in the abundance of goodness that you have given to us, first of all, for salvation and then for this miraculous uh, good report that Daniel got on his health. And Lord, I just thank you for everyone that is listening today. Every home that they will feel the infiltration of your presence. Because without your presence, Lord, yes. there is nothing. There is nothing because your presence brings joy, peace, and keeps it all together. And we invite you, Lord, to just may your word go forth with power that people not only in this home, but in all the homes and cars we're listening to, that they will receive a touch from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, I'm hoping that Joel and Sam can come down and be with us today as well. Um, this has been a, a, a great experience for our whole family. Uh, in some respects, it's been one of the most... Uh, traumatic times of our lives. We have nine children, and we have 22 grandchildren so far, and we're videoing this from our house today, so if you heard that buzzer in the background, that's eggs being made right now. <laughs> the whole thing is that we are uh, delighted today that uh, not only has God brought a great deliverance to Daniel, but we feel like it's a deliverance that in the days to come we'll be sharing with many people because there's going to be a, a dissemination of uh, information, if you will, uh, of how, of what he went through and how that may be able to bring deliverance to many thousands of other people as well. Uh, to, when you hear the word cancer, that is what the world calls the big C. And that big C is the scariest thing that you can be told. When you hear that word, people say they, they, they just are like transfixed and they walk out of doctor's offices thinking that they've been given a sentence of death. And then the medical world demands that you take chemotherapy. And uh, what you're going to hear a little later on is uh, Daniel's decision not to take chemo. And then you're going to, you know, even though that you're researching other things that some people have gotten free from cancer by drinking certain things, juicing certain fruits, and doing certain things, um, it's always like, is it really going to work? But... My son Daniel and Joel began to research some things that would, uh, and through that research, they found some keys and they discovered things. And we're not going to be able to go into great detail today, 
on all of that, but in the days to come, we hope to be able to share with you step by step what they went through and what they've discovered. Uh, we were, I was in Nicaragua, Central America, and my son was uh, rushed to the hospital because he, his intestines were backed up uh, and he, his stomach was dis distended. Is that the right word? And so Annette was there with him. And I'll never forget, I got this message from Annette. I finally was able to call from the bush, from the Mosquito Indian area of Nicaragua. And it was uh, that phone call that broke my heart. And she said, Daniel is here. Uh, he's calling for you. They just told him that he has colon cancer and he needs you home tomorrow. <laughs> And tomorrow might as well have been eternity, and I told you that uh, there's just no way that I can get home because the planes only fly on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays, and then I'm so far back in the bush it would take me a whole day to get back to the main, to, to the town, uh, to the largest town on the Rio Coca River, and then have to fly to Nicaragua, then would have to take the next day. So it would be three to five days before I could even think of being back here in America. And uh, I think I talked to Daniel on the phone uh, at the hospital bed there. I was talking to Ruth, I think, and Joel. But this was a, an awesome uh, thing that I was hearing for the first time in the bush of Nicaragua, and I couldn't do anything about it. I, I was helpless, and my son was calling, Daddy, come home. And he's not 10 years old or 12 years old. He's 35 years old. But he still wanted me to come and pray for him, if I could just pray for him. But sometimes, folks, uh, prayer is a phenomenal thing. But as we began to research and go through this process, we found in the Bible that when King Hezekiah was told, you're going to get 15 more years. He said to the prophet, tell me, how can I know you're telling me the truth? What sign would God give me? And so the prophet said, you want the sundial to go forward 15 degrees or backwards 15 degrees? And so he said, well, the sun's going to go down anyway. So make, the, make it back up. Now, those people were not aware of the fact this world's spinning. <laughs> and for it to go backwards... You know, that was a big thing. And what, what caused the world to go backwards? Uh, if there was some other uh, elements or some other things that uh, uh, came into play at that time, a uh, planet coming real close to the Earth or some tr traumatic thing that was happening on the planet Earth, we don't know. But at the precise time it was supposed to do it, it backed up. But then the prophet of God said to the king, you're going to get your 15 years. But when he was leaving, he said, take and put some fig leaves on a, um, make a paste of fig leaves and put it on that boil, that sore that's killing you, and you will be healed. So it wasn't just the word of the Lord. And you can't say that the prophet and the king didn't have faith because the whole world moved backwards. But God did not choose to heal the king by just the word of the Lord or just prayer. But he healed the king by the word of wisdom. And God has given us some words of wisdom. And the, Daniel and Joel began to research and go and visit doctors and, and visit people that worked in, in oncology. And they found something that was just like... Where did this come from, mistletoe? I think what I want to do is uh, bring Daniel in here now and let Daniel share uh, some of this process because I think, if, if I remember correctly, Daniel, you actually, you can stay here. Okay. Yeah, I think, Daniel, um, that you all actually went to Charlottesville and you, you know, we don't have to name names or whatever, but there was a man there that had this solution that had helped many people on cancer. It was uh, some formula formulation of minerals and stuff like that. Sure. Why don't you share with the people some of the preliminary process that you went through uh, to come to this place where you were told, you and Joel were told, 
uh, mistletoe was being worked with from German doctors and uh, share a little bit about that. Sure, absolutely. Talk, um, you have to talk live for this camera here. Well, uh, I'll back up just a little bit and give you a, uh, give you a quick rundown. Um, it, was, it was back in June of last year that, uh, um, well actually it was back, it was about in March or so. Mm -hmm. um, my, um, I've always uh, worked in construction and uh, in installing like floors and uh, helping my brother Steve. And uh, it was back in about March that my, my sciatic nerve really started to bother me. And then my leg uh, got worse and worse. The pain was shooting down the my right leg. And um, I just, uh, it got so bad, I actually moved out of my house and moved in with my parents for the time being because I couldn't hardly walk at all. Uh, and rather than getting better, it got worse to where um, I couldn't sleep on a bed. The pain was so excruciating. <clears throat> and then um, ultimately you, losing the use of my calf, um, not being able to stand up to cook, uh, basically paralyzed me. And uh, I got to this point where I'm like, you know, God, what is going on? Um, so uh, I would uh, start seeking after truth and reading things and praying and, and just saying, God, just, you know, teach me what do you want me to do? What do I need to do? I, I know you're my healer, but I need wisdom. And it was, uh, it was, Dad was getting ready to leave for, for Nicaragua in June, and um, like the Holy Spirit that week prior had just, I believe, started to impromptu me, you need oranges, you need oranges. And I'm thinking, why do I need oranges? And I don't eat oranges. Um, so I uh, <clears throat> started buying bags and bags of organic oranges, and I was chomping down whole bags a day, eight or ten oranges a day. Um, it was the only thing that sort of seemed to help my leg a little bit, and then it'd get a little better than a little worse, but when, uh, when Dad left for Nicaragua, that morning he was leaving, I, um, I was craving orange juice, and I drank a whole jug of orange juice that morning before Dad left. A big, big, brand new jug of orange juice. And from that moment that I drank that orange juice, uh, something happened in my body, and totally uh, just, it, it shut me off to where I could not use the restroom at all. And uh, so dad left for Nicaragua and um, my legs still killing me. And, uh, and I got to where so much pressure started to build on my stomach. Now, prior to this, I, I never knew I had an issue other than my, my sciatic nerve and my back and pain. But um, it was three days after dad left and I still was not able to use the restroom and my stomach kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point it was pushing on my lungs. So, um, went in the hospital, uh, which mom had deprived me to go, because I don't do doctors, I don't do hospitals. Uh, but I was, <clears throat> it was about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, 10, 30 at night, and uh, couldn't breathe. There was so much pressure uh, on my stomach and my chest. And so, um, went to the hospital, and uh, I'm just thinking, you know, maybe I ate something, you know, that's, you know, stopping me up or whatnot. And so um, they asked a couple questions, the doctors did, and then, uh, then they took me back and did a, did a scan in my body. And then they came back and said, uh, Mr. Bennett, you have colon cancer. There's a big colon blocking your whole, big uh, tumor blocking your whole colon off. And I was like, this cannot be. It looks like cancer. We don't know for sure yet, but it looks like cancer. And I said, I said, this cannot be. I said, this cannot be. And so... They were about to do emergency surgery <clears throat> and put a, uh, put a bag on my side. And uh, I'm just laying there I'm in so much pain and I'm thinking, God, this cannot be. So I asked the doctors, I said, is there anything else we can do? Can we wait? Because I believe God can do something. They said, well, if you can wait till morning, we'll see if we can get a stent put in uh, to give you enough passageway beside the tumor so you're able to use the restroom. I said, well, okay, let's, let's shoot for the morning. So I made it through the night with the pain and um, that morning um, they were able to go in and uh, put a stent beside and then they said to me um, you know you can wait a month or you can waste some time to think about it but you really need to get this taken care of and um, you know it's just like God just gave me the faith you know um, if I had left there I could have you know been operated in fear but I said you know what uh, let's go ahead and, and see what this joker is inside of me I said I believe when the time of surgery comes three days later it won't be there so I believed God it wouldn't be there, and I believed God it wouldn't be cancerous. And this whole time, I'm having to take pain medication, not for my stomach, 
but for my, my leg, because again, I couldn't even lay in the bed, because I had been sleeping on the floor all the months prior. The whole thing of even being able to sit down, I haven't been able to sit uh, for almost eight months. But um, right after that happened, uh, <clears throat> I believed God that I wasn't going to have to have surgery, and uh, it wasn't going to be there. Trusted in the Lord, the time came, that damn devil was still in me. So I said, all right, God, you got me this far. I guess you're going to have to keep bringing me through this. I believe God it wasn't going to be cancerous. Well, I find out it's cancerous. So then I say, all right, well, God, you're going to bring me through this. So when they went in, they had to take out seven inches of my colon. And uh, after surgery, I later found out, the doctors found out, were, uh, were amazed. They said, you know, it, it's weird. We took out seven inches of your colon, but we found an extra foot of colon just laying inside you. And my testimony is that God knew this was going to happen even before I was born. So he made me with extra colon. You know, and the doctors, they really don't want to hear, you know, whatever. It's all about science to them and, you know, uh, this is what works and this is, you know, how they do protocol. But um, that little bit of interesting part of I had an extra foot laying in me, that was like the Lord saying, hold on, son, hold on, son. The Lord said, I got you. And so I needed little, as it were, breadcrumbs along the way. So we got out of the hospital. Um, I went on. I went on a, uh, on a really strict, like, just prayed and was like, God, what do you want me to eat? And I started to really seek God on some things He wanted me to eat. So I, I didn't do a total fast, but I did. I did a thing of, you know, just wanting to, uh, you know, eat healthy and follow the conscience of what. The Holy Spirit would say to me. So I just, you know, I started to use wisdom. And my sister, who's a nurse, she's uh, she's right there going, you know, we need to do this and this. And I'm like, okay, sis, let's do this. And uh, <clears throat> so um, so I started, you know, trying to eat healthy. And, and we started to search after truth. We we went we went to one one natural doctor that was a Christian and and uh, talked to, to talk to this lady and. Uh, and uh, it was like it was like God began to give me little truths along the way, but I never got the truth all at once. Um, this this one doctor uh, had some things that I, I felt a witness to the Holy Spirit, and and some things it was uh, it was you know okay, but I picked up a little bit there. Like uh, for example, that I really need to start incorporating more vitamin D, which I later found out that my vitamin D levels were very very low, and that um, there's a direct correlation with that. But um, you know, God gives us wisdom along the way of our journey. He doesn't give us the whole roadmap at one time. And um, so then I went to this other doctor down in Charlottesville, and um, he had done research where he actually developed um, certain strands and certain things uh, to kill cancer cells, but wasn't a believer in, in the Lord by no means. But he had a little bit of wisdom on some things. And so, um, so I gathered a little bit of information there, and I prayed about it, and I said, okay, Lord. Because, see, God wants us to be uh, a seeker of truth. And, um, you know, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Um, not that God isn't our healer, but it's, it's sometimes it's just a lack of knowledge or the word of wisdom, like, you know, Dad talked about in the Bible. And a lot of it, folks, it's disobedience. Because if we really go back to what the Word of God says, the Word of God makes it clear you know, what God set out a plan for us to be healthy. And the, the ultimate truth of this entire universe is the Word of God. And it's got everything from what you need to do in every part of your life, especially diet. So I started to read and read, and then I'd ask Dad questions about, you know, did, 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 did God want us to eat this, or to eat this, or this? And so I started to really, you know, seek after truth. And then... Um, then the time came after I saw a couple of doctors that I had to go to the oncologist a couple of weeks later for the follow-up visit. And honestly, folks, it, it, it wasn't good because I was expecting, you know, hey, you know, it's, a, it's just a tumor that got it out. Um, but, um, you know, they gave me some really bad news. Um, that uh, <clears throat> they, they, they told me I had stage uh, 3C, which was borderline stage 4. And basically, they, um, the tumor inside of me was about the size of a golf ball. It was uh, cancerous, and it had spread to 10 of my 17 lip nodes because they took out 17 lip nodes. And so the doctor basically said, um, you know, we'd love for you to make it five years. And, um, you know, we are, if you live five years, it would be like 29% chance. Uh, and they, they started really pressuring me to do chemo. And um, 
then I started, to, I started, I told the lady, I said, well, you know, I believe God's my healer. And uh, the oncologist, you know, they, you know, that's good, that's positive energy and blah, blah, blah. But it was the more I started to dig my feet in the sand because um, it was something for me that uh, I'd rather die in faith than live in fear. And it wasn't that I was trying to be tough, but it was like that God gave me this faith to say, hey, son, just hold on, I got this. And then, and then I was remembered um, the story in the Bible that, that um, talks about King Asa, where King Asa developed a disease in his feet. And he, but he said, and he, and he actually died prematurely because the Bible says, because he trusted not in the Lord. And don't get me wrong, folks, there's a time for doctors and medicines and surgery, but if the Holy Spirit gives you the strength and the Lord is telling you to trust in Him, it's better for you to trust in Him than to just be safe and do the doctors because sometime God gives us a mandate and if He gives you the faith to get through something, you have to just set your face like flint that you're going to follow the Word of God because if you don't, then you actually operate in disobedience. And so um, after I got you know the Word from her, um, I asked her some questions, the, the oncologist lady, and she says, well, you know, there's a little bit better chance if we if we give you chemo, but because you're young and strong, we want to give you the maximum dose allowed by the FDA to maximum toxicity. And I'm like, well, Lord, that doesn't that doesn't sound good. Um, and they so, actually they actually bring you what you were telling me, and Joel was telling me, they bring you to a point of death almost. They bring, they take them mess up all your immune system. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's it, the maximum. Yeah, the, ma the maximum maximum dose allowed by the FDA would be, uh, it, 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 it would have knocked me down regardless of how strong I was. And um, so I... Uh, and then they rebuild the immune system back. They, they take it down to the basement and then they rebuild it back. But by that time... Well, they, they, they take it down and they say, wish the best of luck. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's no way they rebuild the system. Mm -hmm. They just say, eat what you want and do whatever you want. What they do is they... Really? They, they go in a beautiful garden, like my, pretend your whole body is basically a beautiful garden, and you get a lot of weeds. The weeds is basically the cancer. Rather than having something go in and take out the weeds, they spray the entire garden, chemotherapy, wow. with poison, and then they say, we hope that the, 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 the kale and the spinach and the broccoli and the, the beautiful flowers that are, represent your healthy cells, mm -hmm. We hope those live and the weeds die. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it's... They're killing everything. They kill everything and then they, they, they hope that the body will choose. And so even with that, the percentages would only go up a little. And then I asked, I asked her, I said, well, what if, uh, I said, is it guarantee you get everything if you do that? She said, no. She said, because, um, she said, cancer cells have a way of dying. I have a way of hiding. And I, I thought, man, isn't that the devil, you know? When he's under attack, he'll hide and, and regroup, regroup to fight again. And um, so I was like, well, that doesn't sound good. And, and, then, and then the lady said to me, well, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to do this. We're going to get you going right away. And, you know, she's being really nice to me. And, and she's a nice lady. But, again, my spirit was saying, just time for you to go. You know, this is, this is, what, this is what you needed to hear. Now, now you know where your faith needs to be. And... Um, then I said, I said, okay, well, let me ask you a question. Let's say that you do apparently, quote unquote, get it all. I said, um, isn't it true that uh, it comes back after chemotherapy? Because my immune system would be so weak. And she put her head down and she said, well, yes, that's true. And she said, well, if that happens, we'll just do it again. We'll give you the maximum dose again. We'll get it knocked out. And I said, I said, well, what would happen after that? She's like, well, I said, isn't it also true that cancer cells, they, um, they develop a strength and then they're even more resistant the second time? And she says, yes. And I said, well, what's the difference in that? And she wouldn't give me the percentages that she, she beat around the bush because there really is no true percentages when you really do the research with the manipulation uh, of how they do the clinical trials. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, after she said it, if it did come back, basically they would shoot the best to give me two years. And there would be pretty much nothing they could do was, was the response I got. And folks, you know, that wasn't good enough. So immediately my life flashed before me and I'm sitting there and I got really anxious and um, the lights were bothering me. And I just, I just wanted to get out of there because this has gone against everything that I've ever believed for. Um, now granted, I've, no one's perfect, never been perfect by far, but 
one thing is true is God's word is true. And regardless of my imperfections, I honor, honored and honor my mother and father. I've always honored them. And God's word says that if you honor your father and mother, your days will be long on the earth which God has given you. And to die at, to die at 35 years old is, is, not, is not a full life. And so, um, so I left that oncologist, and I, and, I, and I dug my face in the sand, and I began to seek God more, and I'm like, God, you got to speak to me, because this is not happening. And, um, and then we met with a second oncologist who was very reputable in the Richmond area, and they basically got very frustrated with me. And when I started to ask more questions, because I started to seek after truth, I started to, I started to really read and, 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 and really, really read the Bible, and then I, I'd, re, I'd read the clinical trials and different things to see what truth was. So I had more questions to ask the second oncologist. And the second oncologist basically gave me some numbers, but then also um, backed up on a few things and then got quite frustrated with me because I'm making a very big uh, wrong decision not to do chemo, and this is the only truth. And, and I asked him, I said, well, if you knew of anything else, would you be allowed to tell me? And he would not answer the question. <laughs> He's, he said to me, he said, well, that's not the point. The point is that there's never any other trials been done with any proof at all. And I said, well, no. I said, answer the question, please. Would you be allowed to tell me? And he would never answer me. And so it was that point I knew it was time to leave. So I asked a magic question. I said, does diet have anything to do with health? And both the oncologists said, no, absolutely not. Eat what you want. And I know that's a lie because God's word is true about what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. So I said, well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in touch. And um, so I think I needed these bad things to be said to me to really dig my face and set my, set my faith for what I believe God wanted me to do. So, um, you know, after that, I'm still trusting in the Lord, and there's one major bad thing I have going on is the fact that, you know, I still I still don't feel that strong, and my leg was still not getting better. And it was uh, it was just really just interceding. Every time a person would ask, how are you doing? You're doing, you're doing, you're doing better. And I, I, would, I would say, I'm getting stronger every day. Getting this getting was in, day. within the first two months after you had had the cancer taken out, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you finally found some things that were hopeful. Yeah. As far as that, that person in Charlottesville, Virginia, you went over there and they had this drink or whatever. And, but you somehow shied away from that after a period of time. Yeah, it was like, it was almost like when, when God leads you to do something, what he might lead you to do today might not be the same tomorrow. There, there's no one fix all. In the beginning, um, God put it in my spirit to cleanse the temple. So I started to do a lot of juicing. I didn't have uh, no meat at all uh, for the first couple of weeks, and I, ju I juiced tons of carrots. Uh, uh, I, I basically looked like a carrot. My feet and my hands still have the residue of orange. Uh, but I, I, had, I had red, and, and, and God put it in my heart that, you know, your liver, your kidneys really need vitamin A. And so the, one of the highest forms of vitamin A is carrots. So I was juicing carrots. And some days I was drinking over 10 pounds a day of carrots. <laughs> you know, and then, and then it's like the Lord would say to me, okay, now it's time for you to add in, you know, a little bit of chicken or well, some you, eggs. You find out there was a difference between a cancer cell and a regular cell as far as the number of receptors. Sure, sure, sure. So, so, so um, there is one thing I've learned is that people that have that have beaten cancer naturally and not done chemo of any sort, almost every single one that I've read on were people that really trusted in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Trust in the they Lord. They trusted in the Lord because it's obedience, folks. Mm -hmm. it, it goes down to obedience is better than sacrifice. And um, so one of the things that I learned was that uh, a healthy cell, when the sugar, when you eat a piece of bread, the, the nutrients go in your body. Uh, it forms like you know sugars or glucose or whatever. Um, the healthy cells, every cell in the body has to have a form of sugar to operate. And so um, basically no energy is basically cancer. The cells sort of die off. And um, what happens is that uh, this, the sugar in the body um, gets taken in by these cells and healthy cells have two receptors. So when sugar is coming through the bloodstream, the healthy cell can grab, they can grab you know, uh, the sugar and, and, and give the energy they need. But a cancer cell has 15 to 16 receptors, so it has a lot more arms to grab. 
and so it, it's basically like sucking the blessing right out of, right out of your life uh, with what you eat. And so um, as I started to do you know more research, I would pray. And again, folks, I want to make this clear: is that food food has not made me better. I've just been obedient to what God put on the earth because it boils down to the Word of God, which says that you know uh, healing is the children's bread, and and God put the herbs and the seeds on this earth for the healing of the nations. Some people describe, uh, I know that, I think without faith in God, none of this works anyway, because doctors have admitted that only God can heal. Yeah, exactly. You can eat anything you want to eat. You can eat oranges and apples all day long, but if God does not have your body in the right position, you'll never receive the vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the biggest killer of all is unforgiveness and not having your heart right with the Lord. That's the secret equation that makes it work. I, 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 I'd be on the shadow of a doubt, is that bitterness in your heart, if your heart's not right, doesn't matter what you eat. You know, it, it really doesn't. The Bible says, a merry heart to have good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dry off the bones. So these, the reason that uh, carrot juice has been so effective, uh, I remember in the, in the 60s, reading a book on a person that said, they, they, were, they said their body was eat up with cancer, and they went on a 40-day fast and only drank carrot juice for 40 days, and the cancer uh, receded and totally went out of their body, and they lived for many, many years after that. So the reason that that, the, the medical reason that that might have something to do with it is that carrot juice is so filled with nutrients and... Yeah, well, but see that again, is that that was the word of the Lord for him because of his body makeup and where he was at with his, you know, his pH levels and things. Because the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that you need not that no man teach you, for the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. And so carrot juice is what he needed to do. I couldn't do 40 days of carrot juice. The Lord led me for a couple weeks, but I had to add some protein and some different things in my diet as the Holy Spirit led me. But these cancer cells would have like 15 receptors. And they would grab that carrot juice sure. and bring it in, and then the carrot juice, the nutrients in the carrot juice, has been known to destroy some cancer. Sure, for a period of time. But then, but then it can also get to a point where, you know, it can be, it can be, it can be a negative. It, it, there's, there's no like one, one fix all. <clears throat> there, there's a cleansing stage, you know, and then there's times that God wants us to fast. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but carrot juice was was right for me for that time. And then um, you know, and then you incorporate. But it's it's really, you know, it goes back down to you got to be you got to be obedient. You got to be led by the Lord. If today God God is speaking to you to do a certain thing, if if today God is saying to you that you need to call up someone and ask them for forgiveness, you need to do it, or you need you or you need to forgive somebody. So, little truths with the food, but it goes it goes also back to God's word about what He wants you to eat. And what he wants you to drink, and what he wants you to do, and so there's a lot of little things. Uh, there are people that have, that have that have sworn against that they've they've been healed by uh, anything from grape juice many years ago, um, and then there was one. Uh, you, you've done a lot of studying about yeah. different testimonies. Yeah, of people. yeah. Jo Joanna Budwig back in the 1950s, a German doctor. She was a like a master. <clears throat> Uh, this masterful doctor of chemistry and, and food and nutrition, and uh, she was helping uh, people with um, with cottage cheese and flaxseed oil uh, that were on their deathbed. Now that might have been truth for them, for them. Yeah, but you know, as the Holy Spirit would lead me, I I, I'm, I would have some cottage cheese and flaxseed oil. In, but it, but again, I never put my faith in the food. I only said, Lord. I'm going to be obedient what I feel you want me to eat, but it's your, but it's, you have to heal me, God. Because food is not my healer, but I have to do my part and be obedient. Um, otherwise, God's not going to go against His Word. So then, when did you find out about this mistletoe and explain that to people? Well, um, there was a lady in, um, in Maryland um, who just loved the Lord, and uh, my sister had come across her research that she had had um, <clears throat> done mistletoe, and basically it is a, um, it's a, it's not the mistletoe, you know, mm -hmm. having the trees, and... Um, you stand under the mistletoe and you get a kiss, right? Yeah, something like that. So, um, yeah, so basically, um, 
it's 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 something that the German doctor has been doing for years, and it's 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 basically just keeps your immune system strong. Um, so it's a poison, but when you take it, it boosts your immune system. Yeah, it's so mistletoe in a natural form is is extremely poisonous, but um, if you if you can if you can take small doses, it's almost like um, if you're a uh, if you if you want to get immune to a snake bite, you uh, you get a little dose of the snake poison, then your body develops an immunity to it. Well, mistletoe has been known for years to help with all different types of ailments, and in Germany they they've done it where they um, they give people mistletoe, and it basically makes the body say, "Hey, um, let's rev up something. Something doesn't seem right in the bloodstream. We need to we need to rev up his body a little bit, um, and and it gives you like it makes your makes your killer cells or your immune system wake up a little bit, um, so that way you can say, um, "Hey, something's right. So let's not search." But see. Cancer cells, they hide from the immune system. They hide from the killer T cells. So what happens is whenever there's healthy stuff coming down your bloodstream or the killer T cells are searching, it's like they have an iron dome that they cover up with. Mm. And um, then whenever they, there's like sugar coming down the hatch, um, they open up and they drink it in and that's, that's how they get stronger. Mm. Just like a devil, just like a demon. And so if they open up and take something that is bad for them, it would destroy the cancer cells, but it won't destroy everything. Sure, sure, sure. But see, the thing is, though, is that you've got to stay in a place of obedience of what God wants you to do and what God wants you to eat. It, it, it really goes back to a daily thing. Now, I know a lot of this so far, folks, has been, uh, we've been discussing uh, uh, some of the preliminary to what happened. But my thing as a pastor was, I was, I was very uh, upset to find out that there is no way to tell if what you're doing is working, short of a CAT scan. And I, I started saying to my daughter, ask the doctors what we can do to verify that what Daniel is doing is working. I didn't care what he did. I just wanted to know that there was some verification. And they said, well, you can take these blood tests w once a month. Now, Daniel, uh, as soon as you found out you, as soon as this cancer was removed from you, you started juicing, yeah. eating nothing but healthy food, uh, food that would build your immune system. Sure. But you, uh, where the doctor put you back together, this woman doctor, what a great surgeon she was to pull this out of you without cutting you all, all the way open. But she uh, pulled this tumor out and uh, put you back together, sewed you back together, your intestines came back together. And they, they, did, they really insisted that you do a colonostomy, which is putting a camera into your uh, intestines to verify there's no more polyps, no more growths or anything like that. And when they did that, they pulled um, uh, eight pieces of flesh. They took eight pieces of uh, tissue around right at where you had been put back together to see what was happening. That was also a great moment for us. And also the fact that every month they were taking your blood tests and if you had elevated white cells, that would be an indication that something's working wrong. If you had a lot of T markers or whatever, that would indicate. And uh, certain markers would tell about the liver or the pancreas or whatever. Explain as briefly as you can some of that because that brought joy to my heart knowing that every month I would ask, well, what was the blood work? And you, y'all would tell me, well, they sent it off to get it checked. You know, they're gonna get it read. And then about a week later, I'd find out that your your blood work was phenomenal, and that was that was very encouraging to us as well. Sure, sure. So about every six weeks, um, I was getting my blood done just to monitor my progress. And um, there's they're they're not sure all answers, but there are certain things that that can tell if anything is brewing. Um, and of course, when they did the, the colonoscopy right afterwards, they they took samples of where they had cut and put them back together. And they're like, if anything's going to show up quick, it would be right there. And you know, I remember I was uh, shopping and I got the call that that um, they hadn't found anything, and I was good to go. Mm -hmm. Eight eight tissues and not one cancer cell in any of that tissue. The biopsies they took. Absolutely. And and you know, I had to start setting my faith for when when they said that, 
when I got the call uh, that, uh, hey, everything looks good, um, instead of being in shock and awe, I had to start setting my faith. Well, of course it is good because God's word is true. Mm -hmm. And I had to really start being a bulldog because I knew that um, there was a bigger road ahead of me than just that. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, the uh, one of the things that <clears throat> right after... I had done that. I had to find another oncologist that would really follow me. So the people, um, the lady uh, that, that started this, this organization um, for the mistletoe, uh, it's just a, it's a great organization. She, she loved the Lord. Now, let me give you a background of what happened to her. She had one lymph node. She had colon cancer like me. She's a little bit older than me, maybe four or five years older than me. She had one lymph node um, that had had uh, cancer in it. So she had like, I guess, it was a, the beginning stages of colon cancer. It really was not um, like mine. She had one lymph node. I had ten that, that had cancer in it. And um, so she took and um, she did the little treatments and three months later when she went back, it had gone from the lowest stage to full-blown stage four in her liver in three months. Mm -hmm. Just from that one lymph node. And then she was a God-fearing woman, and she started to really pray and seek the Lord, and, and she started to find out different answers, and that's what the Lord led her was to mistletoe mm -hmm. um, to help her out. And so she had gone out to Colorado and done the mistletoe therapy, and then um, she actually helped develop um, this, this whole organization. And she help said, her. I'll help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She so helped you. She actually helped sponsor me to help pay for some mm -hmm. of the, uh, the mistletoe uh, treatments down there. But praise God, she's, um, I think she's going on 10-plus years, uh, you know, Cancer free. They had to. They, I think they had to remove um, some of um, some of some of her liver, um, and they had to do some, you know, some other things. But but God, God, God has brought her through this. So I took a little bit of, of wisdom from that. Now, when I when I went to uh, later to John Hopkins um, to see the oncologist there, that was her oncologist. Uh, I wasn't really accepted there at first, but I got an appointment, and I, w I was blessed to meet this doctor. And, um, and he actually told me, he said, um, he said, he said, you need to know something. He said, you need to know something right now. He, he said, we'll pass the door of the window. What's happened's happened. Mm -hmm. If you were going to do chemo, you should have gotten it in the first six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. We'll pass that door. So what's happened's happened. Nothing we can do to change it. You need to just go ahead. He says, I'm proud of you. Your, your blood work's looking good. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep trying to eat as healthy as you can. And, you know, and he, he told me he was proud of me. Mm -hmm. And so I knew at that point that this was a doctor that wasn't, you know, helping on Kibo, but he was very, um, you know, he was encouraging to me. Mm -hmm. And so he said, come back in, uh, in a couple months and we're going to do the CT scan here. He said, you come to Baltimore and we'll get it done here. So it was at that point I said, okay. I said, okay. So, you know, I had, I had to do with that. Uh, you know, what's happened's happened. But that's in the medical field. But yeah. see, with, with God... It doesn't matter. There's no time with God. And all, all things are possible to them that believe. So the medical you're, was looking good. But you had to keep bringing yourself back to the fact that Jesus is your healer. Yeah. That the word, the word of the Lord is your sustainer, you know. It has to be. It has to be. Because the moment I, the, if the moment I put myself in anything that I do in the physical realm, then that is being glorified and not God. So you're, you're, uh, the reason that the oncologist from John Hopkins wanted to see you is that something unusual happened when you went to Colorado and they were doing this mistletoe drip every day. Uh, they were shocked at what happened to you because when you first got this word, you must have started doing all the right things physically. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it had to have been the Holy Spirit leading me on what to do. Um, I just, first day I got to Colorado, they gave me the lowest dose of mistletoe, and there's never a reaction. Uh, they look for, like, um, a fever or a rash, so it's, it, it, there's really no side effects. It's basically just an, an immune immune system. A one degree increase in your temperature. Yeah, or, yeah, or, or, or sometimes rash. people get really bad, but there was people in the clinic where I was getting um, this immune, um, immunotherapy of mistletoe that they were on 10 vials more than me. 
and they still were not getting the so reaction. So they drip one vial, and then if that doesn't, the next day they may drip one and a half, yeah. and the next day they may drip two, yeah. Yeah. until they find out the stage that it takes for your body to get a one degree fever to know that it's working. Sure, sure. And on the first day, on the lowest dose, I was talking to the doctor, and I just, uh, I think she was, you know, asking me certain questions, and I said, Doc, I said, I think it hit me. And uh, I got a fever the first day on the lowest dose. And the doctors were amazed. The doctor said, go get the nurse, go get the nurse. So they went and got the nurse, and they're like, I don't, I don't think you couldn't get a reaction that fast. And they checked me, and sure enough, I had a, a 99.8 fever. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. This is wonderful. And I said, I said, well, praise God. I said, God's already healed me. My immune system's already strong. <laughs> but for the, sake of, for the sake of obedience, and my, my sister and different ones really wanted me to follow through, mm -hmm. I went ahead and, you know, did 21 days. Well, it was about it was about two weeks. I stayed out there. Oh, two two yeah. weeks. Two weeks of that, and then you know they they were different things like them. They'd give me like a vitamin C, or mm -hmm. some different things like that. But um, I got to a place where, even then, even then, you have to remember, folks, the stories are not that much. It's, it's worked with some people. It's worked with not. Okay. Um, and so your face has to be set like flint, no matter what. That. God has to be my healer. He has to. He has to bring me. He has to bring me through this, and I'm. I'm doing everything in my power of obedience. Because remember, um, mistletoe doesn't kill cancer at all. Mm -hmm. Mistletoe is nothing more than it something boosts your immune system. Sometimes, or sometimes it makes it worse. Oh, it, really? It, yeah. It, it it depends because if your body, some people have bad reactions and can't get it. So. Um, it's it just uh, it's something that you know I felt peace about it, and we went out and did it. Um, and um, so I, I got, when I got back, I still kept seeking truth and I still kept asking God. I said, God, is there, what else, what else? It, uh, I kept going back to Genesis, different parts of the Bible. It talked about, you know, God has given us the plants and the herbs and the seeds. See, bear nation. So um, I started to do research and then, I, and then I found another major truth that was um, apricot seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and not just apricot seeds in general, but, you know, uh, the fruit. You know, it's, it's, it's life. And from the beginning of time, Satan has tried to pervert the seed. He, he's always tried to change the seed. He's tried to destroy the seed, the seed of God, Jesus Christ. And, and so it boils down to life. And today you see foods that are GMO. They don't even have seeds in them. And the seeds that they do have in them are so toxic that it basically puts holes in the intestines, of, in the line of your intestines. Wow. So, so as I started to read, I was like, okay, God, I said, I want to eat how you want me to eat. And then I, I, I did a lot of research and found that um, there are people that lack a certain vitamin called vitamin B17. And so I said, God, no one's ever tested it. I don't know if they have a test for it, but, but I'm going to be obedient. So if you're eating an apple and you feel led to eat some apple seeds, eat some apple seeds. Mm -hmm. um, but the vitamin B17 found in an apricot seed, I felt like the Lord said, you know, take these in faith like you're eating an apricot. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, it wouldn't hurt. They're, they're, they're bitter. But I went ahead and, and I, I, I you ate them, and they are really bitter. Yeah, they're nasty. They look just like an almond. Yeah. But when you and you start, when I started chewing, I put three or four in my mouth, and you said you looked at me, you were laughing. Yeah. And I said, this tastes just like an almond. Yeah. And for about three minutes, it tasted like an almond, and then it got bitter. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So you you learned about apricot seeds, and you read stories about how people had just done apricot seeds. Yeah. And God led them to do that, and they were made totally whole. Yeah. Uh, again, not 100%, but mm -hmm. being led by the Lord. And, you know, you have to remember, again, it goes back to the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, not for lack of God's power. It is, there's really two things. It's either lack of God's knowledge or lack of obedience to the Word of God. Mm. It's, 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 it's about obedience. And I believe that one of the reasons why that I, I had this issue is because I was not obedient to the Word of God years ago. There were things in my life that were not right, and there was also um, not only uh, in areas of my life that I was living in sin, but also there was, there was areas of life I was living in sin in the realm of my diet. And, you know, yeah. you know, God made it clear, the unclean meats are not good for you. And there was a time I ate, I was on this one uh, diet where I ate eggs and cheese and milk and a ton of bacon. Bacon, bacon, bacon for months and months and months. <laughs> and so could that have played a factor? Possibly. But regardless is God's word is true. And I, I shouldn't have been eating uh, tons of these uh, different types of, you know, 
bacon and pork and ham and things because you know maybe every now and then it's not necessarily a sin of course because Christians eat it and they'll probably be fine but it might get you to heaven a lot quicker now for me I'm a very extreme person when I like something I do a lot of it so I'll buy a lot of something and I'll stay on that for a while but I, I was not obedient in how God wanted me to eat you know like talking about the meats God makes it clear not to eat the blood in the meat I mean there's simple there's simple simple things you need to cook you need to get the blood out the meat when you cook it um, just like shellfish God does not want to eat shellfish is it a sin not necessarily I know you love shellfish dad but the more obedient we are I quit eating it yeah oh, okay good good <laughs> so tell me you have a book next to you and you believe that this book is the next level yeah because God has put the wisdom in the earth he's made the knowledge accessible to us but people have rejected it and that that man that wrote this book here sure 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 he is uh, sharing things about t testing the pH in a person's body and his book is full yeah. of the Word of God and yet it's not in print today no yeah, um, there was a doctor, his name was, uh, was Dr. Kerry Reams, he was uh, born in 1905, and um, this book really began to change my life because he makes it clear throughout the whole book that uh, he wants to teach people how to, how to cleanse the temple and obey God's commandments and that God will heal them. And how did you get a whole, how did you find out about that book? The Holy Spirit led me to it years ago. It's years like, ago? Years ago, God started to put certain truths because I... I had felt like I wasn't uh, as energetic as I used to after I'd ate all that meat years ago. Uh, I had really... All had, that salt. Well, yeah, and bacon. I, I mean, I was eating 10, 15 pieces a day of bacon, and I was living off milk and cheese. But you heard a fat diet was good for you. Yeah, and so I, I you know, wanted to, you know, be healthier, and, and I, I went extreme on it. Um, but uh, that could have been, you know, many factors, and no one really knows it, from the air you breathe to mold in the house to... Mm -hmm. To, um, to, you know, I mean, folks, folks, let's face it, Satan is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. And, I mean, if you really knew the truth about your laundry detergent, you'd never wash your clothes again. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most poisonous thing in your house is fabric softener. Mm -hmm. uh, and so basically, not to go on a tangent, but mm -hmm. if you have bad laundry detergent, you're wearing your cancer. It just depends which one you're choosing that day. Mm -hmm. um, so, but again, not to live in fear, but my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so... Dr. Kerry Reams, I got a hold of this book. It's called Choose Life or Death. And the reason why I like this book so much is because Dr. Reams was not a doctor in the beginning. He was, a, he was such a God-fearing man. And uh, he was known in the community uh, as being the Moses of health. And his entire life was just dedicated to winning souls to the Lord. He was, um, he was a, a, like a biophysicist. And he was, a, he was a person that dealt with agriculture. And he dealt with the soil. And he talked about God's word. And he, he quotes so many words of scripture in here. And he talks about uh, King Asa, like the story I told you about. And he, God began to reveal truth to him about my people perish for lack of knowledge. And about health and nutrition. And he said that it's not that God doesn't want to heal us. It's just that we're living in disobedience. And we need to be attentive to what he wants us to eat. And then God will do the rest. Mm -hmm. And um, But he said also, you can do everything right you want to do. You can eat exactly how I want you to eat. And you can still be overtaken if you don't follow God's word and choose forgiveness and get rid of bitterness in your life. You can be overtaken if you don't choose God's word. God's word. That's a profound statement. Yeah. Now, Daniel has been shown some scriptures. And I've preached healing and faith. I've seen miracles all around the world. Uh, but a sustained miracle, a miracle that doesn't happen instantaneously, uh, requires sustained faith and some of these scriptures that you have uh, found share those scriptures with the people and then we're going to tell the story about you going this past week and finding that you're cancer free so one of the one of the major things that i i want to make clear to everyone that sees this is that the ultimate truth and the ultimate power of god is is his word. Yeah. The Bible says that God honors his name, that God honors his word even above his name. Mm -hmm. And from the beginning of from the beginning of time to the end of time, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And his and wisdom was God's delight. Yeah. 
Wisdom was with God before there was a world, before there was a universe. It was like wisdom was God's child. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. like wisdom is the principal thing. Yeah. And you read the book of Proverbs, wisdom was God's daily delight. Sure. But see, the thing is, if you don't, if you don't trust in the Lord, and you don't, you don't follow God's word, then it's, 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 it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know, it, it's really, it's really not going to work. But you have to make it a, you have to make a decision in your life. You have to make a decision that you are going to honor God's word and that you're going to hide his word in your heart. You have to hide his word in your heart because it does you no good to pull a book out in an emergency. That's it has to be inside of you. You know, one thing that Dr. Kerry Reem said in this book was so amazing. He said, let me, let me be destitute, let me be poor, let me be ill. That do whatever you must do to me, but take not your Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. And and so many times we forget we forget to bring the Holy Spirit with us everywhere, and we we, we forget that He is a living He is a living person. The Holy Spirit is is with us. He walks with us. He talks with us. And and if we're not listening, then we're in harm's way. But I had to get to a place where I would remember God's word in my heart, even if my mind had been in a car wreck and my mind, my brain was not working. Mm -hmm. Even if I was totally brain dead, my spirit, even if my brain wasn't working, I have to have his word hidden in my heart. The Bible says, hide mm -hmm. God's word in your heart that you might not sin against him. Right. So I began to say, okay, well, I know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But what verses do we have on healing? And there are many of you out there today, you've been believing God for something for years. Yes. But the problem is that you really have no right to ex to expect your 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 prayer until you hide God's word in your heart, mm -hmm. because we, you know you have to you if you're believing for finances, then you need to find finance scriptures and hide that word in your heart and be able to quote that word at the drop of a hat. Well, for me it was healing, and so I said, Lord, I need to be upheld. So then I started finding. I always knew the verses, but I never knew where they were found, and I, I think it's very profound that you know your scripture, mm -hmm. and that you know where it was found. You see, when Jesus scrolled out the scrolls in Isaiah, he found the place. They didn't have verses back then, but he knew what was before and after to be able to find that place, which means he was familiar with the scriptures. And with me, I needed to be able to say Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes were healed. So that was one. So I was like, okay, that's good. And then um, after talking with Beverly, with um, her, her walk with the Lord, um, I, I asked Beverly a major scripture, and one that she, she said to me, I, I locked on to it, that wow. it made truth to her, and that was Nahum 1.9. That's an amazing scripture. It says, what do you imagine against the Lord? He will cause an utter end. The affliction shall not come a second time. That's, that's profound. Yeah, it really is. Second that time. Did, that's, that's a scripture to hold on to. That when cancer finally leaves you, or when you go into an area of restoration and healing, believe God that it will not come back a second time. Say it exactly. again. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will cause an utter end. The affliction shall not come a second time. Mm -hmm. So that was another one. But then you get to the point of, okay, you're believing, but now what about other, everybody else is believing for you? And what about people that are going to feel bad for you or feel worried for you? And then um, this minister years ago had told me a verse that I locked on to years ago. It was Psalms 119, 116, which says, Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Wow. So I needed to hold on to that, that I'm not ashamed. See, many people, they don't, they don't speak because they don't want... It's like, oh, I'm doing good, but I don't want to piss Satan off because, pardon my French, but... You know, the Bible says the man that pisses against the wall, as far as I'm concerned, you know, Satan is nothing more than a, a little piss ant. And he has no respect in the kingdom. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the founder of Christ for the Nations said that it's never wrong to pray a violent prayer every day. And some people, they, they really put uh, so much fear in Satan that they don't want to proclaim exactly. God is my healer exactly. lest they exactly. be ashamed when if it comes back or, exactly. if they, or exactly. if they die of it or whatever. But see, the Bible says that we overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. See, I had to get to a place where 
it really doesn't matter what the doctors say because either God's word is true or it's a lie. Now, I can't have that boldness if I'm not if I'm not living in faith and I'm not living according to his word because the Bible also says that if your heart condemns you not, then you have confidence towards God. See, my heart doesn't condemn me. I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that uh, I'm better than anyone, but what the Holy Spirit brings to me every day, I make sure it's under the blood and that it's right. And every day my heart does not condemn me. So if I'm not living in sin and my heart doesn't condemn me, or if I do something wrong, I'm quick to ask for forgiveness, my heart doesn't condemn me. There's no open door for sin. So my heart condemns me not. So I have confidence towards God. And you know, Dad, you preached years ago, it really boils down to a covenant. It's a covenant. And two days prior before I was going to go get all this done, I'd, I'd come in the living room, and you'd be, I don't know if you remember, you'd be on the couch, and I'd say, I'd say, Dad, I said, His Word is forever written in heaven. Remember I'd say that to you? Yeah. And then I'd say, it's about a covenant, Dad. And then I said to you, what's mine is His, and what's His is mine. Mm -hmm. And basically, what's God, what, what, what God has for me is for me, and all I have belongs to Him. And when you can get to that place where you are yielded to the Holy Spirit, you, you can, folks, you can pray all day long. You can have every famous major minister pray for you all day long, but it's not their faith that's going to heal you because the Word says it's according to your faith. But even then, you can have all the faith in the world and you can be living in disobedience and God is not going to go against His Word. So this, this that happened this week, you, went, you had to go in for a CAT scan and I did not know all the emotional and all of the different steps of faith you were going through but when you crawled into that CAT scan machine did anybody crawl in there with you yeah okay so that day I went to do the CAT scan the Lord had been preparing me um, to do the CAT scan and this was two days prior before I'd have to go to John Hopkins to to get the results so talk about agony man Satan can really put mess with you with fear um, but God, God was preparing me. God was really preparing me. And I, um, I, the worst part about it was having to drink this nasty drink. So I started drinking this drink and I'm thinking, oh God, this is, this is not healthy for you. You know, it you got a radiation drink. drink. I don't know exactly what it is. It's got some stuff in it that I know I've heard from a lot of people. It's, it's not healthy. But I, I, I said, I, I start, I found scripture immediately as I was drinking the drink. I found scripture. Um, Luke, Luke 16, um, 16, 17, 18, 19, and that, that whole batch of scriptures is the, one of the last things Jesus said before he rose up into heaven, which has got to be one of the most powerful things. If the last things he said on earth, they must be the most powerful things. So one, it said that, um, you know, I tread on serpents and scorpions. If you drink any deadly thing, it will not harm you. You lay hands on the sick, you know, and the sick will recover and they descend it into heaven. So I said, God, I said, I'm going to drink this. And it, I know in the natural it's, it's bad, but it is not going to harm me. And, and I drank it. I drank the first bottle, and then there was a little bit of time to pass by before I have to drink another one, like 30 or 45 minutes later. So we, um, me and Mom walked next door to the Martins, and I'm like, I'm going to get some fruit. I'm going to get some fruit and some different things that see what this Martins has up here. And uh, so we walked in there, and I'm just, I'm thinking, man, i got to drink another drink, and then i got to get in this machine. Not in this machine, and I don't like needles, folks. I don't like, I don't do doctors. I don't do needles. I, I can't even swallow pills. I'm learning how. It's me and the medical thing is, you know, uh, it's just it's really hard for me. And uh, so, um, as walking out of the Martins, uh, I prayed and I said, "Oh, Holy Spirit, I need your help." And I was carrying the bags. I had my book bag on, and I was carrying the bags of groceries, and. I felt the Holy Spirit come and wrap His arms around me. It felt like a person cloaked me, and I just dropped my shoulders down, and I'm like, there you are. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I felt, I felt Him come upon me. But I hadn't felt it prior to the whole week. I mean, I've been seeking God, but it's like, it's like He came. And then I put the groceries in the car. And then I went in the room, and... Uh, uh, I started to drink the second drink, and I'm drinking the drink, and there's, you know, there's people sitting next to me all around, and... Um, I looked at one lady and I said, you know what? I said, I don't know why, but God wants me to tell you that he's with you. And she began to preach to me. She said, amen, I received that. She says, you know, God had Luke 
as one of his disciples. And I didn't know, but Luke was a doctor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that was a little special. And then um, I drank the other drink, and then I sat next to a guy that told me he had had cancer, and they had to build him a whole new bladder and, and a whole mm -hmm. things. And then I told him my testimony about how, well, I didn't do chemo, and I'm trusting the Lord, and they're going to find no cancer. God, tell me, and I'm eating a steak tonight. See, I had to come to a place where... <laughs> You hadn't had a steak for six months. No. You have, you have to believe that you have received. You can't believe to yeah. get something. And I had, to, I had to say, from the time I got out of the hospital after I found out that I, that I had cancer, that uh, I had it, and God had healed me. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and every time I spoke to all my friends, they would ask, how are you doing? What's the latest results? Well, God's healed me of cancer. This is what the doctors are going to find. They're going to find nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to eat a steak and a, and a big cookie that night. So I, and then my, my friends would like wait and they'd be like, okay, well, we want to celebrate with you, you know, after you get out. And they'd be like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. It was like a celebration. Even if I didn't totally believe it at that time, I had to come to grips with the fact that I must believe that I have received. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, so once I got to that place so where... You crawled into that machine. Yeah, I crawled into the machine. And... They did their thing. Yeah. Well, when I got in the machine... And they wouldn't tell you anything. That yeah. was so frank. No, yeah. Before before I had... Um, be, be, before the, they, they finished it, the, the, um, before they put the, the, the thing in to get you hot, the, the, the dye to get you hot, they were doing measurements. So they went in and out like this to do measurements. And it was at that point that um, I felt the Holy Spirit come. I felt the Holy Spirit come right at that machine. It was amazing. It was like it was like I felt God lay on top of me, and I've never felt so much electricity in my life. Every mm -hmm. every cell of my body was just exuberating with the power of God, and I just began to pray in the Spirit and speak in tongues. And I said, "Oh, thank you, Jesus," and I said, "God is with me," and I thank you right now that as the machine is going in and out, they're going to find nothing, and I just believe that I have received, and I saw what I wanted to see, and that was no cancer. Got out the machine, I went home. And then even then it was harder because that was on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And you know, of course the the results and what are they gonna say? Mm -hmm. And my heart started to analyze like, are the nurses looking at you funny? Whoever read the report, are they pitying you? Are they being happy with you? Are they being sad with you? All these emotions are going through my brain. And I said, you know what? Damn the devil. I said, God's word is forever settled in heaven. Yes. And I, I set my face like Flint. And I said to myself, I really don't care what the doctor said. I'm healed. And Joelle gets this report somehow, and she reads a little, sneaks a little peek at it, and it says something about nodules. Well, well what happened was is we did the scan Wednesday, and um, it was Friday. Me and Joelle were going to drive up Friday morning to Baltimore. They had emailed her the results, but she had never read them. But while we were in the, while we were in the hospital in the waiting room in John Hopkins, we, right right before we were going to go in, she had had like a quick peek. It was during that time we were up in Maryland. She had had a quick peek and she she saw a couple things and she noticed the report was really long. And uh, I I'll let her tell you more about it. Joel, come quickly. But um, it was it it was it was it was it was a step of faith. But again, God had to prepare me to that place. See, it's about a covenant, folks. And you have to keep telling yourself, but if I had not hid God's word in my heart, then I wouldn't have anything to stand on. Because His word is forever settled in heaven. And at the end of the day, it's God's word. And I knew that I had done what I needed to do in the natural to be obedient to Him. You know, whether it was eat, eat some apple seeds or apricot seeds or, or, or juice, fruits, or vegetables or, or what have you. But I, I had to come to a place where I had to believe in the Lord with all my heart and not worry mm -hmm. regardless of whatever the doctors would say. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where it came down to, Dad, because if I had gone to Baltimore worrying what they were going to say, then the whole drive home would have been miserable if it had been bad. Mm -hmm. Or or I, I would have based my faith and my fear off of what the doctors have said. But God made it made made me have so much faith inside that I set my face like Flint. If they say something bad, fine. If, 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 if they say something good, praise God. I'm going to let you sit here. No, you sit right there. I'm going to let her sit here. So, Daniel, this is what's really exciting to me. Joelle's up there, and she takes a little peek, and all she reads is there's a few nodules in people's lungs, you know, in, in your lungs. Are you going to sit right there? Yeah, Can we get her in the picture yeah. there? Okay, okay. 
And so this is my daughter, Joelle. She's a registered nurse. And uh, so you heard Daniel, and I haven't even talked to you about this, Joelle, but I know it must have been hard for you when Daniel's telling everybody, I'm today you're going to find out there's no cancer in my body. And you're cringing the whole time. Every time he's testifying to people, it's like you got to be dying a thousand deaths because he's getting ready to have the big letdown. Is that right? Tell, tell yeah, him that. I just, in my mind, was screaming, stop talking. Stop talking. Oh. It was killing it's me. not looking good. <laughs> I had not known that she had even taken a peek, though. Yeah. I had known. So he was there witnessing to everybody. I mean, telling him. Telling everyone about Jesus. And he I sits down there with the and doctors, and he says, God's healed me. He's like, because you had made up your mind, Dale. It didn't matter what the result was. You weren't going to embrace any negative result. And if, even if it's a good result you're not going to be surprised about it because your faith has to work both ways. How can you be exuberant that, you know, you, you got to be happy yeah. when the report comes back there's no cancer, but you, your true faith says, of course the report said that, right? Yeah. You, you had to bring yourself, explain that a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, for one, the more we were driving up, the more I got to thinking, I was like, I was like, man, what are we doing? I was like, sis, me and Joelle are driving up there by ourselves to Baltimore. It's a three and a half hour drive, and then there's traffic, and then it might snow. And, and <laughs> These are the two researchers. Yeah. They were going everywhere trying to find what we need to know to beat this thing, you know. The truth, the truth. You know, my people perish for lack of knowledge. God's power is true the same today, yesterday, and forever. But it's, it's our job to do due diligence. And so with Joelle, I was thinking, I was like, this, I, I told her after, I was like, what were we thinking? We went up there by ourselves. What if we had both been a, mess, a, 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 a mental break? We did not have been able to drive home. <laughs> it's a long drive, especially with traffic. And um, All the way to Baltimore, to yeah, get, to just to yeah. get this thing read. I had not known. We got in the nurse's station. Joelle, t tell, tell her exactly what she, what she saw happen with, um, like you had, read, you had read a little bit. And give a little bit about what, she, what you felt. I had just uh, three hours before the doctor's appointment, I had gotten the um, CT scan results emailed to my work email and uh, just barely took a glimpse of the imp the final paragraph that gives the impression of the CT scan and also saw that it was a very long report which usually there's issues going on if it's a long report and so when I saw the final impression I just read the first sentence and said, what are you doing? Stop, don't read any further. And all I saw was um, that there were several pulmonary nodules. Uh, pulmonary mean in the lungs. Lung, yeah, nodules in the lungs. Um, and Just nodules. Yeah. And we come, we, we, we came home that I didn't know what that meant. Night. I wasn't doing, I didn't, I didn't read any further. If I had read the whole report, I would have seen that it was totally fine and normal, but... Um, but just read that little bit and my heart sank and had to keep a smile on my face for the next three hours and act like I never knew <laughs> everything was she okay did great. She did and uh, just you know you have all this thoughts racing through your mind of well you know it could have already been there and now this growth is plateauing and maybe it's going to start shrinking with everything that Daniel's doing but just just had a lot of fear in my mind for those three hours and I was by myself <laughs> and all you could hear is Daniel saying I'm healed mm -hmm. and God this report's going to show it he's telling I was everybody. quoting scripture to the, the nurse that was taking my blood I was quoting because here's the thing even though I set my face like flint I had to keep reminding myself God's word is true and the only thing I have to stand on is God's word is true and so the nurse You're covenant God yeah I was in covenant with him and so when I got my blood taken I I, I was just quoting whatever came to my spirit and I, I, I quoted he had to listen to me because I wouldn't walk out of his room I had I quoted Nahum 1 9 the affliction won't come a second time <laughs> you know so and 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 so still not knowing that you all had seen anything we, we finally got called back and it was it was cruciating because it was like we were supposed to be in and out by two thirty. They called me at two fifteen, but they hadn't taken my blood yet. And Joelle had gone to the bathroom, and then they're like, "Go sit back down." It wasn't until till later on, like a thirty minutes to an hour later, that we actually got 
uh, to get the blood done, and then it was like an hour to an hour and a half before we actually got to go back. And so that was longer than normal. And then we got this long drive home, just me and her, and she's got this little worry in her heart. She did good. She hit it for me good. And I think it's a good thing she did. Yeah. But I, I just, uh, so we get back there, and and um, the nurse is like, I can't get it to download. The the, um, the, pre the the assistant to the to the main oncologist was a like, CD. They made a CD of your CAT scan. And they couldn't get it. They and couldn't. They could. He didn't see if something didn't seem right. And then George tried to forward it, and still it wasn't going through because she didn't have signal back there. So she's walking in and out trying to forward it and get signal. Then she's like showing him a phone, and it was just it was it was horrible. And then the, the, we hadn't still seen the doctor, and the nurse practitioner was like, this and this and this and this, and and so we just were like waiting and waiting. And then she's like, well, while we're waiting for the doctor, get on the table. And let me let me check it. So she checked, you know, my lungs and my face and everything, and and then Joel fitting in the chair, and then she the doctor uh, the nurse walks out, and I, I see like Joel just gets a little stressed, and, and and that's the first time I'd seen her get stressed, and I and I looked at her and I said, sis, I said I said it's I said it's fine, I said God's already spoken to me. His word is forever settled in heaven, and God has healed me. So I really don't care what the doctors say. Let's hurry and listen to this, what they say. Let's get, Let, out of here. Let's get it over with, and then we're going to go home and have a good night. It really does not matter what they say. What did you think when he said that to you? I just felt such a relief. Yeah. She you was worried a, about me. You felt a relief. He's going to be okay. I may fall apart, but he's going to be fine. Right? Yeah. <laughs> But I, I was worried for her because we were driving home, you know. But 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 I had to set my I had to set my faith like flint, and I'm not I'm not bragging or boasting because here's the thing: in the natural, I don't think there's any person that is strong enough to not worry. Was about. your heart sinking when he kept when, when the doctor kept looking at him and saying, "You look fine, you look fine." What did you yeah, think? Before we got the results, the doctor the doctor came in. They didn't say anything right away, did she they? She was like, "It sounds like your CT is going to look great because you sound like you're feeling great," and I'm just like, "It's going to be horrible." <laughs> <laughs> but they were, yeah, she. They were both just kind of easygoing and relaxed, and I just the doctor finally walked in with the nurse practitioner and we're just kind of waiting for them to give us an update on this ct scan and they're just kind of laughing and talking and they're having a good they're time not, they're, You're yeah, dying. there's no solemn look on their faces and then i just started to get confused <laughs> and, 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 and he, he said well he how did he how did he deliver it what was his first delivery well, you oh, finally say well what's the, what is it or... he's like okay well this looks good i guess we'll see you in a in a few months and she said yeah you know it looks it looks good it looks like there's something we need to watch which were these pulmonary nodules that she said they're totally normal. We're not concerned about them. Yeah, the doctor because interrupted normal her. Normal people yeah. have them. The only reason why they're noting them is because of his history. And if you have intestinal, uh, it's intestinal cancer. It doesn't usually go to the lungs. It not goes, first. It goes to the kidneys Liver. or the pancreas or Liver something like that. Yeah. So and, and I just interrupted them at that point and I said, "Whoa! So you're saying that this CT scan is completely normal?" And they're like, yes, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she was like, well, wait a second. Could they find any cancer cells? Did you, did you ever ask him that? There, yeah, there, there was no growths of anything yeah, in his nothing, body. Nothing, so. nothing. Yeah, because it shocked you well, because she was, she was like this. And he goes, wait a second, so you mean, and she, she interrupted the doctor. She's like, she, went, she, she put her hands out like this, wait a second, so everything's fine? And then, and then when he said good to go, I was like, well, great, doc, can I give you a hug? <laughs> I gave I gave the doctor a hug, gave the nurse a hug. I'm like, praise God. And then I got to share the Lord with the doctors. I told them, I said that, you know, I've been believing God to heal me, mm. you know, and uh, and that my family comes from a long line of missionaries, and we've been trusting in the Lord. And God, God really made it real to me not to do chemo, but trust in Him. So every chance I got, I try to get a lick in. Joel will tell you, it might be awkward, but people got to <laughs> listen to me. One guy in the waiting room, I started telling him about the Lord, and he didn't want to hear it. But he, he wouldn't even make eye contact. I said, I, said, I looked at him, I said, God is good. God is good. Like that, and I took away. And he'd be like, he was like this like, all the time. But he wouldn't look at me. He wasn't mad at me, but I made him feel comfortable. And I said, I said, guess what? God's healed me of cancer. They're going to find that out today. That's right on, man. And then he, he ended up moving one chair down. But, <laughs> but and I, I did get to talk to one lady and, and uh, when we were leaving. And um, she had said that she had been believing God. She had just found out she had pancreatic cancer. 
pancreatic cancer, and she was believing God that um, she did, she wasn't going to do chemo. And I, I I got to share a little bit with her uh, about the Lord and, and what God God had made real to me. And um, you know, He overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. You know, like my grandpa used to say when we was young years ago. I, I preached in service a while back. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. Even if you don't believe something, you got to get to a place you're going to say it to the blue in the face. Even if you don't believe it, you need to say it until you do believe it. And God had to bring me to that place. You know? I'm on my radio talk show at 3.55. I get this message. No cancer. Not a single cancer cell in my body. And uh, when I got that, I shouted on the radio. Mm -hmm. I finished my sentence and I said, I've got breaking news, folks. This is the happiest day of my life. My son that was dead is alive. You know, because this, the big C. And then people, I said, call in and let's praise God. And the phone lit up. We've never had so many phone calls in such a short period of time. And one of our friends called, called in, uh, didn't call in, texted in and said, the big C, because I talked about the when people get the can, you know, they say they're diagnosed for cancer. They have this big C, you know, cancer's like a big, terrible C. And she said, the big C is Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. And that's how we want to end this thing today. Next Sunday, we're going to share a very shortened version of this at Joy Fellowship Church. Amen. And, jo and uh, Ruthie is going to share a little bit. Ruth, and uh, Neil right down behind here. Ruthie had to be a part of the beginning of this process when she said to her boss, she just said, I'm not going to work. I'm staying here. She stayed with you day and night, night and day. And uh, she kept you pumped up. And she kept agreeing with you. And you were up there prophesying. Tell, to to all the nurses and the doctors, everybody came in. God is my healer. God is my healer. <laughs> and we pray, played um, the whole time, all night long, we played. Uh, we had three songs. Three songs that we just played all mm -hmm. night long. Mm -hmm. One was, I believe God's my healer. And um, so all night while we were sleeping, I'd get up and I'd make sure my music was going for us. And we prayed and prayed and prayed. And the Holy Spirit... God the Father, Jesus, they were in the room with us mm -hmm. in that hospital. And I would call in from N Nicaragua because my trip had just begun when all of this happened. And they were in victory uh, because he had an extra foot in his colon. And, and there were so many signs along the way. But next Sunday, Daniel's going to be singing, I believe you're my healer. Mm -hmm. He's got a, his own way. He wants to sing that. And next Sunday is going to be a powerful, powerful uh, time at Joy Fellowship Church. And we ask you, we invite all of you to come and be there. And my wife has uh, been a, a trooper. <laughs> fortress, a bulwark, as it were, uh, during this whole time. And uh, she's kept everything together. I'm going to let Annette have the final word here. I just think that we serve a mighty God. And I just want every one of you that are listening to be encouraged. You may not be suffering with a cancer today. You may have a different type of sickness. Or you may feel the weight that you carry financially or emotionally or even relationally with other people is more crucial and heavy than even a sickness in your body. But the Holy Spirit wants to touch you right now. And He wants to minister. And there is nothing too hard for God. Folks, we thank you for being a part of this uh, program today, and uh, we pray it's been as much of a blessing to you as it has to us. I know we went into a lot of detail, but th listen, the bottom line is, with God, all things are possible, and all things are possible to those that believe. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. One of the key things of all of this, as we've gone from point to point, even when we went to Colorado, those people up there counseled people 
about has there been a traumatic event in your life because trauma can bring on sickness but let me tell you what brings on sickness even more than trauma sin get rid of sin in your life confess your sins if you confess your sins He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all, all unrighteousness. Unforgiveness, get rid of it. It's, it you're not hurting the other person by not forgiving them. You hurt yourself. Unforgiveness will bring sickness. Sin will bring sickness. Bitterness will bring sickness. The Bible says a wounded spirit dries the bone. If you've been wounded in your spirit, give it to God. Find this relationship with God, even as the Holy Spirit crawled into the CAT scan machine with Daniel. The Holy Spirit wants to crawl right into your life and into everything that's happening in your life. And so we share with you, Joy Fellowship Church is, is 1001 Perrymont Road in Hopewell, Virginia. Um, it's in the Kipax Estates area. Uh, but it's 1001 Perrymont Road, Hopewell, Virginia. You can see some more of our sermons and messages online. But the bottom line is, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And right now, I'm going to let Daniel lead you in a prayer of salvation. You can accept Jesus into your life, and that can become the beginning point of turning around your captivity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for <clears throat> your word that is forever settled in heaven father and right now god anyone that uh, sees this broadcast today i pray they will they will see one thing out of anything that's said here today and that with god all things are possible and that god is the only one that is the true healer not food not medicine not doctors we appreciate those things but god is the healer and we thank you god right now that with you all things are possible. And I ask God that the ultimate gift that we can receive is the gift of salvation, God. And Lord, anyone listening today, if you if you'd repeat after me, I, I'm going to say the prayer that I've said my entire life. If you'd repeat after me, it's the prayer of salvation. The Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me that I may be whiter than the snow. Yes, Lord. Lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Father. Take not your Holy Spirit from me, God. Give me your son, Jesus. May he come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins, God. Help me to serve you. Help me to be who you want me to be. I believe you're the son of God, and I believe you died on the cross. You sent your son, Jesus, and died on the cross. And on the third day, he rose again, and you're waiting for, for me in heaven, Father, right now. And while I'm on this earth, God, I believe that you want me to have life and life more abundantly. And you do not want me to be sick, but you want me to be healthy. Because with you, all things are possible. Yes, Lord. And I thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Hope to see you next Sunday in church or on live stream, joyfellowshipva.com. God bless you.